مجددا وشكرا لحضوركم معنا وهذا الوفاء لمنتدى جدة الاقتصادي جلستنا الآن بعنوان تطوير المهارات التأسيسية والمحافظة عليها ويشارك فيها السيد إبراهيم بن فهد المعاقل والسيد فهد أبو النصر والسيد ليم بون تيونغ ودكتور محمد المبيض والسيدة داليا شيبر وتدير هذه الجلسة البروفيسورة ستيفاني فاي اسمحوا لي أن أرحب بهم جميعا جالس سأعرف البروفيسورة ستيفاني فاهي وهي مديرة هذه الجلسة وهي بدورها ستعرف ببقية السادة المشاركين فيها انضمت البروفيسورة ستيفاني مؤخرا للعمل مع اي واي بعد أكثر من 25 عاما من الخبرة في جامعة أستراليا حيث عملت في المجالين الأكاديمي والإداري وتتمتع بخبرة محلية ودولية تغطي كافة المجالات المتعلقة بإدارة الجامعة والشؤون الإدارية والتدريس بما في ذلك البحث والتعليم والتسويق وخدمات الطلاب كما تحظى بسجل حافل بالإنجازات في إحداث تحول بالجامعات على الصعيدين المحلي والدولي وتؤهلها خبرتها الدولية الواسعة لتطوير منظور عالمي لأفضل الممارسات الهادفة لتطوير الأداء في القطاعين التعليمي والبحثي حصلت البروفيسورة ستيفاني على درجة البكالوريوس مع مرتبة الشرف من جامعة سيدني ودكتوراه في الجغرافيا البشرية من الجامعة الوطنية الأسترالية والزمالة من المعهد الأسترالي لمديري الشركات أترك المجال الآن للبروفيسورة ستيفاني فهد تفضل Thank you very much, and welcome to this panel titled Developing and Sustaining Foundation Skills. As I was introduced, I'm the lead partner for education for Ernst & Young, which has now been rebranded only fairly recently as EY. I'm very honoured to chair this panel today, and I've come all the way from Australia to do so. And the reason I've done that is because we've been able to assemble the very best people to speak on this topic from around the world. We have people who are going to speak about an issue that's very important across the world. We're going to speak about skills and jobs. Skills and jobs. Wherever I go around the world, people are talking about skills and jobs. And it's a critical issue which we can't afford to get wrong. We can't afford to have a lost generation of unemployed youth. So as I say, we've assembled a very distinguished panel for you here today. We have panelists from the kingdom uh, and from the region, from Southeast Asia and also from Europe. So I'm confident you'll find their presentations thought-provoking. Uh, I've asked them to be thought-provoking, but also to be very direct, because we only have 10 minutes per presentation, uh, and I've spoken with each of the panel members, and they assure me that they're going to stay within their 10 minutes. So then we have plenty of time for questions to debate this very important issue. But within 10 minutes, you can't say anything that's very substantive. So each of the panel members will be available after this presentation. So if there's uh, further questions you'd like to ask them, I'm sure they'd be very happy to enter into a more detailed discussion. So what I'd like to do now is to introduce our panel members, and I'm going to do it in a rather unconventional way. 
So rather than read out the CVs of the panel members, what I'm going to ask them to do after I introduce their name and their position is to say one thing about themselves that even their colleagues don't know. So I'll say something about myself uh, in this same vein. So one of the things that people might not know about me is that in 2008, I actually climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. So I was very pleased about my achievement. <laughs> So now I'd like to introduce Mr. Ibrahim uh, Moakal, who is the Director General of Human Resources Development Fund. And I'd like you to say something about yourself. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, the one thing that probably everybody here uh, doesn't know about me is that uh, over the past four years, my best coach, my life coach, um, has been, as of today, a four-year-old son, uh, my son, um, who is a Down syndrome. And uh, this son is uh, teaching me every day something or many things that I am I'm not aware of. Oh, so. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'd now like to introduce Mr. Fahad Al-Nazar. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure did not climb uh, Kilimanjaro, but uh, one thing, um, uh, one year ago I had uh, eye correction surgery, so I no longer wear glasses. Let's hope I can read the screen today and, and manage my presentation. <laughs> very good. Uh, also, Mr. Lim Boon Tien, who's the General Manager of IT Education Services. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Stephanie. Well, uh, I don't think I have any colleagues here. So anything I say will be new to you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm a happily married man <laughs> with two sons, 19 years old and 16 years old. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Mohammed al Mubaid. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, since we are talking about youth and employment, um, I want to tell you that my first job in college was uh, working as a worker in a slaughtery house for chicken. So my job was to literally kill the chicken and carry them from the tool up to the assembly chain uh, for six months during the summer in the northern uh, city of Kamloops in Canada. Oh, very impressive. <laughs> and then our last speaker, Dr. Dahlia Skipper from Switzerland. Well. <coughs> Thank you, Stephanie. As we are talking about um, skills development and vocational education, I would tell you that I have two children, and one ch ch child went through the WET way, and the other one went to the academic way, and both are very happy and have a good salary. Excellent. Thank you very much. So can I now welcome our first speaker, Mr. Ibrahim al Moakal? to the stand. Okay. Thank you very much. I will, uh, I will try to stick to the time and uh, hopefully I'll beat it as well. Um, here is some help. Um, my, my colleagues actually helped me in putting a few slides and uh, I need to confess something uh, and before I do that, I want to thank the organizers and uh, supporters of this forum that became a very, very well-known uh, flagship and uh, very well-respected international forum. And for that, I really um, thank them and uh, for, for, um, for also inviting me to, uh, to be present with you today. I also heard that the translation uh, from English to Arabic is very good, so I want to try the translation from Arabic to English, so allow me to speak in Arabic, please. And um, uh, I, I'm sure they will do a good job in, in uh, translating my uh, few words. <coughs> so, let's hope this works. Okay. Um, 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اولا امسي على الجميع بالخير وابارك للقائمين والمنظمين للمنتدى الوصول الى مستوى اعلى من الاحترافيه والمهنيه والعالميه انا كسعودي فخور جدا بان يكون لدينا مثل هذه المنتديات التي اصبحت مثار للراي العالمي فشكرا لكم طلب مني ان اتحدث عنكم بصفتي مدير عام لصندوق الموارد البشريه وتنميه الموارد البشريه عن الشباب وعن اكساب الشباب مهارات اعترافي اللي تحدث فيه قبل شوي هو انه كان لي لقاء او محاوله لاقناع القائمين على هذا المنتدى ان يمنعوا الجهات الحكوميه من التحدث في هذا العام ويطلبوا مننا كجهات حكومية أن نحضر ونستمع وننصت ثم نحاول أن نلبي طلبات القطاع الخاص لأن هذا المنتدى هو منتدى يمس بالدرجة الأولى القطاع الخاص يعني هم حاولوا وأعتقد أنهم يعني وضعوا في في الموازنة هذا العام ثقل أكبر القطاع الخاص وأنا أشكرهم على ذلك لا زلت سأحاول في العام القادم أن نأتي فقط كمستمعين إذا كنا نمثل الجهات الحكومية لا يوجد في الحقيقة شيء يمكن أن أقوله في عشر دقائق هو غير موجود في أذهانكم يعني سنتحدث عن إكساب الشباب المهارات الجميع يعرف ما هي, ما هي المعضلة الجميع يعرف ما هي التحديات الجميع يعرف أن سوق العمل السعودي يستقبل سنويا حوالي 300 ألف تزيد قليلا وتنقص قليلا من خريجي التعليم يدخلون إلى سوق العمل الجميع يعرف أيضا أن أكثر من 60% من هؤلاء الخريجين أو الداخلين سوق العمل يحملون شهادات تعليمية غير مطلوبة في المقام الأول من القطاع الخاص وهذه معضلة يواجهها أصحاب القطاع الخاص وأيضا يعني تضع ظلال ثقيلة جدا على حامل هذه الشهادات العلمية لأنهم تعبوا ولأنهم في نظرهم أنهم يستحقون أن يمكنوا من العمل في القطاع الخاص لأنهم تعبوا واستحقوا هذه الشهادات فنحن ما بين مطرقة وسندان المشكلة تتضاعف إذا أخذنا التركيز في الشهادات في الشهادات الانسانيه والمعرفيه الاخرى التي لا يحتاجها القطاع الخاص تتضاعف اذا اخذنا ايضا هذه الحسابات وطبقناها على الجنسين ففي جنس الاناث تكون المشكله مضاعفه السيدات او البنات او الشابات المقبلات على سوق العمل يواجهون ضعف هذه المشكله مقارنه بزملائهم الذكور. أنا وعدت مديرة الجلسة بأن سأحاول أن أطرح بعض التساؤلات الحقيقية، لماذا نواجه أصلا هذه المشكلة؟ يجب أن نتوقف عن الطرح التقليدي وأستميحكم عذرا وأتمنى أن تتسع صدوركم لي قليلا وأعتبروها تساؤلات قد لا نجد لها إجابة اليوم ولكن ربما تفتح مثار للبحث دائما نحاول أن نلقي بالملامة على جهة ما فجزء منا يلقي باللوم على النظام التعليمي ويعتبر أن النظام التعليمي منفصل تماما عن واقع الحياة العملية وجزء آخر يلقي باللوم على القطاع الخاص أو المنشآت لأن المنشآت في نظرهم في نظر هذا الجزء الذي يلومهم هي منشآت تتقاعس عن تدريب الخريجين والخريجات وتريد أن يحصلوا على موظفين جاهزين من اللحظة الأولى وجزء آخر يلوم المجتمع بأطيافه يلوم الأسرة يلوم التكوين المجتمعي بأننا لا أصبحنا أو توقفنا عن إنشاء جيل يقبل التحدي ويصر على أن يتعلم قبل أن يحصل على فرصة وظيفية الأسباب كثيرة ولو فتحنا المجال للتساؤلات سنستمر إلى ما لا نهاية لكن دعوتي لكم وأنا لا يوجد لدي إجابة أن نبدأ بطرح الأسئلة الحقيقية 
حتى نصل إلى إجابات حقيقية لأننا ندور في هذه الدائرة من السبب منذ أمد طويل ولم يحدث تغيير ملموس بشكل قوي حتى نستطيع أن ندعي أننا وجدنا على الأقل سبب رئيسي من أسباب هذه المشكلة ستكون هذه الشريحة ما قبل الأخيرة في صندوق تنمية الموارد البشرية نحن نعمل أيضا مع عدد كبير من الجهات ونعمل معكم أنتم في الدرجة الأولى في القطاع الخاص والغرف التجارية والمؤسسات المدنية أن نحل جزء من هذه الإشكالية لدينا مبادرات ومبادرات عديدة جدا ولكن لدينا مبادرة خاصة فقط بما يعرف بالكارير إدوكيشن أو بمحاولة إكساب مهارات للطلاب في وقت مبكر من حياتهم سأضع بعد هذه الشريحة عنوان لبريد إلكتروني أتمنى من المهتمين منكم أن يسجلوه هذا العنوان مرتبط بهذه المبادرة لدينا مبادرة ضخمة جدا ونتوقع أن تستمر لسنوات طويلة حتى تبدأ بإتيان أكلها تقوم على أساس الوصول للطلاب في مقاعد الدراسة سنبدأ بالمرحلة الثانوية والبدء بإكسابهم بعض المهارات العملية في الوقت الذي يدرسون فيه يعني لن نطلب منهم مغادرة مقاعد الدراسة ولكن سنطلب من المتحمسين منهم والمبادرين منهم أن يبدأوا بأخذ مهارات عملية يتولى صندوق تنمية الموارد البشرية ربما دفع جزء من تكاليفها فإذا وصل الطالب إلى السنة النهائية من المرحلة الثانوية يتخرج لا يتخرج فقط بالشهادة الثانوية في يد ولكن يتخرج بالشهادة الثانوية في يد وربما بدبلوم أو أكثر في يد أخرى نتوقع بإذن الله أن ترفع هذه الطريقة من معدلات قبول هؤلاء الخريجين في التوظيف نتوقع أن ترفع من معدلات الطلب عليهم من منشآت القطاع الخاص لأنهم سيكونوا مختلفين عن أقرانهم الذين فقط تخرجوا بشهادة علمية هناك عدد من أركان الرئيسية لهذه المبادرة مثل ما أنتم شايفين على الشريحة سيكون في اكتشاف النفس اكتشاف الميول والقدرات الشخصية سيكون هناك القيم المهنية التي يكتسبها الشخص سيكون هناك اكتشاف اكتشاف وفهم الأنشطة الاقتصادية المختلفة سيكون هناك محاولة لرفع مستوى القبول الشركات الموظفة والمنشآت الموظفة لهم employability و سيكون في آخر محطة إعدادهم لسلوكيات الوظيفية سلوكيات الأساسية الوظيفية المطلوبة منهم هذه بس بعض, بعض ما سيكون في هذا البرنامج الطموح لكن أنا أريد هذا العنوان البريدي لمن لديه الرغبة في أن يشاطرنا بأي فكرة أو يبدأ يتابع معنا تطور هذه المبادرة حتى يتم إعلانها بشكل رسمي أتأمل من الجميع أن لا يبخلوا علينا بآرائهم لكن أريد أن أغادر المنصة بفكرة أو خاطرة أننا يجب أن نغير من سلوك سلوكنا نحن على الأقل صناع القرار مثلا في منشاه القطاع الخاص والجهات الحكوميه من ان نعامل الجميع على انهم باحثين عن عمل جوب سيكرز يجب ان نغير المايند سيت في اذهاننا نحن حتى نستطيع ان نغير في اذهان الاخرين يجب ان نتغير من جوب سيكينج تيتشينج الى كارير تشوزينج لان اختيار وظيفه لا يعني بالضروره النجاح فيها اختيار وظيفه هو فقط مواءمة مؤهلات معينة بوظيفة معينة في نشاط اقتصادي أو في مكان أو لدى شركة موظفة بينما اختيار الكرير اختيار الخط الحياة الكامل سيلقي ضوء كثير على المقومات الشخصية لدى الباحث وسيعطيه منصة أخرى للتفكير في كيف يختار وظيفته التي هي المرحلة أو المحطة الأولى من الكارير باث وليس فقط أختار وظيفة عشان أحصل على وظيفة لأن راتبها اليوم أعلى أو لأنها في نفس المدينة التي أنا فيها ربما لم أقل كثير وهذا هدف من أهدافي لأنه لا يوجد لدي كثير أن أضيفه لمعلوماتكم الثرية أنا هنا لأتعلم منكم أكثر مما أن 
تأخذوا مني وأعيد التذكير بأن من يجد في نفسه الرغبة والحماس ليساهم في رسم صورة هذا البرنامج الطموح لإعطاء كارير جايدنس وكارير إديكيشن للطلاب حتى نبني جيل مختلف تماما أن يساهم معنا عبر هذا البريد الإلكتروني أشكر لكم سعى صدوركم واستماعكم والسلام عليكم How was it? Thank you very much, uh, Ibrahim. And now I call on uh, Fahad to do the next uh, presentation. Uh, I think you've made some very important points, very challenging points for us to consider. And it's not just a matter of matching skills with a job, but it's also contemplating a career path. I think it's a very important yes. point. So I pass on to Fahad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salatu wassalam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. الحضور الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طبعا الأستاذ إبراهيم ما شاء الله التزم بالوقت وأنا إن شاء الله أيضا هحاول الالتزام بالوقت um, There should be a presentation I'm not uh, seeing my presentation on the screen I'm not sure طيب um, this, Okay, there it is طيب uh, مجموعة الأغر هي حاوية فكرية غير ربحية مستقلة النموذج اللي يعرف بالغرب بالثينك تانكس تقوم بتزويد صناع القرار في المملكة العربية السعودية بخيارات ومبادرات استراتيجية في مجال التنمية الاقتصادية والثقافية والاجتماعية في سبيل تحول الاقتصاد والمجتمع في المملكة إلى اقتصاد ومجتمع قائمين عن معرفة قبل أكثر عفوا قبل اكثر من تسع سنوات من الان قامت مجموعه الاغر باعداد استراتيجيه المملكه العربيه السعوديه في التحول الى مجتمع معرفي وصراحه كانت احد الدراسات اللي اخذت حيزها خلال فتره الاعداد سنه ونص في الاعداد وشارك في اعدادها العديد من الاشخاص حوالي 300 مشارك ومشاركه من خلفيات ثقافيه ومهنيه مختلفه وايضا من من اجيال مختلفه شارك في اعدادها العديد من الشباب نبع من هذه الاستراتيجية أربع أهداف وهي تعزيز موقع المملكة الاستراتيجي وجعلها رائدة في نموذج التنمية الإسلامية تنويع مصادر الدخل بالنسبة لاقتصاد المملكة لتقليل اعتمادنا على البترول تعزيز البنية التحتية المعرفية في المملكة وأيضا تنشئة جيل جديد من السعوديين تقود ثقافة المعرفة والتعلم طبعا إذا ما تكلمنا على الاقتصاد والمجتمع المعرفي كلنا نعرف أن الشباب هم الركيزة اللي تبني عليهم هذه النظرية التنموية هم إن شاء الله اللي يحنوا راية التغير نحو الاقتصاد والمجتمع المعرفي. من هذا المنطلق حرصنا في مجموعة الأغر ليس فقط على إشراك الشباب في أقدر عدد ممكن من الدراسات والاستراتيجيات اللي قمنا بإعدادها، بس قبل سنتين من الآن قمنا بإطلاق مشروع الحاوية الفكرية الشبابية، واللي حاولنا من خلاله أن احنا نكون حلقة وسط ما بين الشباب وما بين صناع القرار، لتبادل الآراء حول المجتمع المعرفي وكيفية الوصول إليه. قمنا بانتقاء 27 شاب وشابة الفئة العمرية تراوحت من بين 16 إلى 28 سنة من هم نشطين في مجال العمل الاجتماعي واللي عندهم مبادرات اجتماعية وقمنا بإعطائهم دورة سريعة ما هو التخطيط الاستراتيجي وكيفية وضع الاستراتيجيات وما هو المجتمع المعرفي وبعد كده تم عقد العديد من اللقاءات بين هؤلاء الشباب وما بين صناع القرار كان هناك لقاء مع صاحب السمو الأمير فيصل بن عبد الله بن محمد آل سعود وزير التربية والتعليم خلال تلك الفترة لقاء مع معالي المهندس عادل فقيه وزير العمل لقاء مع معالي الأستاذ فيصل المعمر الأمين العام للحوار الوطني وعدة لقاءات أخرى نبع منها تقرير قام بإعداد الشباب تناول رؤيتهم حول المجتمع المعرفي وكيفية الوصول إليه إحنا من طرفنا في مجموعة الأغر قمنا بتوزيع هذا التقرير على عدد أكبر من صناع القرار ومن الشباب لكي تعم الفائدة والتقرير اليوم موجود على موقعنا على الإنترنت ويمكنكم الاطلاع عليه مبادرة أخرى حابب أطلعكم عليها اليوم الأغر قامت بإعدادها ولا زالت تعمل عليها الآن هي دراسة الأسرة المعرفية إذا ما تكلمنا عن تنشئة جيل جديد من السعوديين تقود ثقافة المعرفة والتعلم اليوم هناك العديد من المبادرات اللي بتقودها جهات مختصة لإعادة هيكلة المنظومة التعليمية في المملكة إحنا كمجموعة الأغر فكرنا أن إحنا ممكن نكون قيمة مضافة إذا ركزنا على تفعيل دور الأسرة في تنشئة تجيل اللي يقدر أنه يعمل في اقتصاد المعرفة 
من هذا المنطلق قبل اكثر من سنتين كان في لقاء بيني وبين اخي المهندس ياسر جوهرجي هو ورفاقه اللي كانوا بيعملوا على البرنامج اقم صلاتك وطرحوا علي فكره ان هم يرغبوا في القيام ببرنامج يحفز مهارات الوالديه وتربيه الابناء في المملكه. من هنا كانت ولاده مشروع الاسره المعرفيه ورؤيته وهي تحفيز الاباء السعوديين لتحسين مهاراتهم التربويه وبالتالي التحول نحو انشاء مواطنين اكفاء للمجتمع المعرفي. تعريف الاسره المعرفيه حسب هذه الدراسه هي الاسره التي تجلب وتكتسب المعرفه في كل ما يتعلق بمهارات تربيه الابناء وتهيئتهم للتعامل مع المجتمع المعرفي. المنهجيه اللي قامت عليها الدراسه اول شيء تم تشكيل لجنه توجيهيه ضمت العديد من الجهات المختصه كان هناك جامعه الملك سعود وموهبه وجهات كثيره اخرى الصراحه وقام فريق بحثي متخصص باعداد الدراسه قادته الدكتوره الاء نصيف وهي طبعا متخصصه في مجال التربيه. الدراسه نفسها كان هناك دراسه مكتبيه موسعه تناولت افضل الممارسات العالميه وافضل التجارب الان الموجوده او النظريات اللي موجوده في التربيه كان هناك العديد من ورش العمل واللقاءات بالاضافه لبحث ميداني مبدئي تم في مدينه جده. البحث الميداني اللي تم في مدينه جده غطى 604 من الاباء والامهات 50% اناث 50% ذكور الفئه العمريه تراوحت ما بين 20 الى 50 سنه من جميع الطبقات الاجتماعيه كان يجب ان يكون لديهم طفل واحد على الاقل وان لا يقل عمر هذا الطفل عن ثلاثة سنوات الدراسه ايضا شملت كل المناطق الرئيسيه في جده بالاضافه لذلك تم تسليم مجموعه 177 مذكره يوميه قام بتعبئتها الابناء عن ابائهم وامهاتهم سالنا من خلال هذه المذكرات اليوميه العديد من الاسئله الشخصيه اللي حبينا نتعرف من خلالها عن واقع الوالديه سالنا مين بيوديك المدرسه كل يوم مين بيدرس معك دروسك لما ترجع من المدرسه في احد من الاب او الام بيتفرج معك التلفزيون لما بتتفرج اسئله حبينا فعلا نتعرف من خلالها عن واقع تربيه الاباء والامهات لابنائهم اليوم في المملكه اهم ما تم التواصل اليه من خلال هذه الدراسه هو وجود اربع انواع للوالديه وكيفيه اكتسابهم للمعرفه. هناك 5% يعرفوا انه المعرفه مهمه ولكنهم ليس قلقون. هم يشعروا انهم مكتفين بالمهارات اللي موجوده عندهم اليوم. 18% لا يعرفوا ولا يهتموا. المعرفة غير مهمة، أنا المهارات التربوية أكتسبها بالفطرة لا أحتاج أن أتعلم أي شيء إضافي فيها. 20% يعرفوا وقلقون، يعرفوا أنه ممكن يطور من مهاراته التربوية ويريد أنه يطورها من خلال أنه يقرأ كتاب زيادة أو يروح لدورة تدريبية. 57% يعرف كل شيء. نعم المعرفة مهمة لكن أنا مهارات اللي موجودة عندي اليوم مهارات تكفيني، لا أحتاج أني أطورها بأي شكل. بعد الصراحة المزيد يعني من جلسات عصف العصف الذهني والتفكير احنا في مجموعة الأغار توصلنا انه يجب نركز على الشريحة اللي تمثل 57% ليس فقط هذه الشريحة كبيرة من جهة الحجم ولكن هم يعرفوا انه المعرفة مهمة ويعرف انه المهارات التربوية مهمة لكن يجب ان احنا نحفزهم لاكتساب المزيد من المهارات وانه يكون يرغب في تزويد المعرفة عنده اليوم مجموعة الأغر إذا إن شاء الله لقينا دعم كافي قد نتوسع في هذه الدراسة لتشمل مدن أخرى في المملكة تشمل قرى في المملكة وأيضا نحن الآن إن شاء الله في صدد أن نحن نحط خطة تنفيذية تكون إعلامية توعوية لتحفيز هذه الشريحة من الأباء والأمهات على اكتساب المزيد من الدهارات التربوية قد يكون هناك مستقبلا جائزة للأسرة المعرفية قد يكون هناك منتدى عن الأسرة المعرفية يقام بشكل سنوي هذه كلها أمور إحنا الآن نتطلع إليها في مجموعة الأغر الدراسة الأولية اللي ذكرتها حقة الأسرة المعرفية موجودة على موقعنا على الإنترنت ويمكنكم الاطلاع عليها أسأل الله أن إحنا في مجموعة الأغر نكون نخطو خطوات حقيقية نحو الوصول إلى الاقتصاد والمجتمع المعرفي والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Thank you very much, Fahad. Now I'd like to call on Mr. Lim Boon uh, to do his presentation. Okay. Well, while waiting for the slide to come on, I would like to take this opportunity to thank 
JEDAL, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, for giving me this wonderful opportunity uh, to be able to share in this platform, this very important forum. And especially so uh, when the topic, which is growth through youth, is one that is very close to my heart. And the reason for saying that is because I come from an organization in Singapore that trains 27,000 youths uh, every year. Uh, we empower them with the necessary technical and vocational skills uh, that are highly sought after by industries. Okay, my slides are here. Um, and in doing so, we actually mobilize a whole generation of youth to contribute towards the economic and social development of Singapore. And at the same time, we have helped to improve lives, uh, the life of ordinary citizens through gainful employment. And therefore, we have placed great importance on technical education back in my home country. So with that, I would like to share with you in the next uh, few minutes uh, five areas, five critical areas which we think are important and crucial and instrumental towards the success of technical and vocational training in terms of empowering our youth for employment. Well, first and foremost, we have an education philosophy that focuses on the development of the whole person. We call it hands-on, minds-on, and hearts-on. Well, uh, vocational training is obvious. We have to provide the necessary skills training in the respective disciplines. But more than just skills training, the other two components, which are hearts-on and minds-on, are equally important to develop and instill employability skills so that the youth will not just stay employed, but they will continue to improve and to learn through lifelong learning. It's a journey. And the outcome is to produce graduates, employees, or even entrepreneurs, they are work-ready and world-ready. So we have this education philosophy back home. It's a holistic approach whereby we focus on the three important aspects and we inbuilt into our curriculum, into our training system with this philosophy in mind. Secondly, as vocational and technical training primarily is to prepare people for work. So therefore, our curriculum has to be very practice-oriented. By that, we take in inputs from the industry. We listen to the industry, what they need. And we incorporate that into our curriculum to ensure that our graduates the moment they leave our system, they are able to contribute from day one. Some of the experiences that I have had with uh, many different systems around the world, or one of the key problems that has been surfacing from time to time is the industry are crying out for skilled labor that are meeting their needs. They are not able to find uh, graduates from technical colleges, from, from the Institute of Vocational Training, they are not able to find graduates that have the necessary skills to do a job. And to add to the problem, some of these uh, systems are not able to produce the relevant personnel matching the different job occupations jobs or different occupations in the industry. It's either they have too many of management 
kind of employee or too many students filling up management positions and too few filling up the technical positions or there's insufficient students filling up the middle management, which is a su supervisory level. So, in a nutshell, there is a mismatch between what industry needs and what the system is producing. So, in our system, we focus on curriculum that are practice-oriented. We take inputs from the industry. And as you can see here, 70% of our curriculum focuses on practical training. Now, what does that mean? It simply means that 70% of the students' time are spent in the training workshops. So, in any typical technical college, we believe that it's important for students to have lots of practice time. So, we emphasize practice, practice, and more practice. And even the 30% theory that we have focuses very much on the technical knowledge that they need to acquire in order to achieve the skill sets they are training for. So, in actual fact, it's 100% technical training. And of course, in our curriculum, we recognize the importance of having life skills, uh, employability skills, so that not only they can find employment, but they stay employed throughout their entire career. Thirdly, authentic learning infra infrastructure is an another important area that is critical to the success of technical education. By that, I'm referring to the training equipment and the training facilities that you can find in a typical technical college. Say, for example, you want to train somebody who can repair cars, maintenance of vehicles. So we set up an automotive training workshop that is modeled after the actual workshop that you can find in the industry. And if you want to train somebody in a restaurant, so what do you do? You set up a training restaurant. You want to train somebody working in a hotel, you have a training hotel. So this is, this is some of the examples that we have back in our colleges. In recent time, we have ev even purchased aeroplanes and created a whole hangar training uh, environment for our students to train aerospace technicians. So this is an extent that I believe that we need to go into in order to create an authentic learning environment, turning classrooms into workshops that's modeled after the industry. And fourthly, image and branding. I think most of us here would agree that technical and vocational training have this particular challenge and which is suffering from perhaps poor image, poor perception by the public. And therefore, lots of efforts have to be put in in terms of publicity, marketing, engaging the stakeholders, community, students, parents, as well as the school teachers. And of course, the students themselves have different career aspirations. So how do we go about meeting the needs of the students or prospective students, at the same time balancing the needs of the industry? So a fine balance will need to be created in this aspect. And in terms of branding and image, we have found it particularly important to have endorsement even from the government 
leaders and of course the industry leaders as well. Last but not least, we can have all the good facilities, modern equipment, and we have the hardware, you have the software, but I would like to add on one last component, and that is the hardware. And that refers to leadership and people. Having strong leadership with a passion and a vision to see through a vision, a strategy that has been formulated and having competent and committed staff to translate those strategies and plans into actionable plans at the end of the day, producing the outcomes and the results that was desired. And with that, I would like to end my presentation and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lim. I think you brought out some very important points and particularly the relationship between uh, the training and industry and having industry involved very early on. So now I'd like to invite uh, Mohammed to take the podium. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 24 years ago, I was finishing my degree in mathematics in the US. And I was not really sure what will a degree in mathematics will lead me to. I had no hard skills. I was not an engineer. I was not an architect, a physician, as my father wanted me to. So I went to my supervisor and I asked him, David, what can I do with my life? What's a, a, a degree in mathematics worth? He said, look, Muhammad, after four years, if we succeed to teach you how to ask questions, then we succeed and you will succeed in life. That was 20 years ago. After I started my work with the International Youth Organization uh, three years ago, I started to think about the issue we're facing here, and I'm not going to talk about anything that uh, my colleagues uh, in this session and the previous session mentioned. Uh, and I could see the parallel between what David told me 20 years ago and the type of things that I've been involved in in the region and around the world in terms of preparing youth to enter the uh, labor market as uh, job seekers or career path potentials or as job makers themselves. And it's not an easy path, by the way. And another issue is there is no one solution for all. And this is one of the issues I want to talk about here. Um, as an organization, we conducted two major studies over the past three years. One of them was to map out life skills training in the re MENA region. And another one was actually based here in Saudi, which I was responsible for, where we met with almost 50 uh, companies organizations, and we conducted two youth focus groups to try to better understand not what the problem is, but trying to find what could be a potential uh, Saudi uh, unique solution that we can contribute to. There, is, there was no surprise, actually, because all the things that I was going to talk about has already been mentioned. Employers told us that they need somebody who can speak and write Arabic. You may be surprised to hear that. People cannot write professional email in Arabic that has a sentence, starting point, a verb, and an end. People had difficulties, employers told us, to write professional English emails with colleagues in the region or overseas, particularly in the tourism sector. Employers told us that they were having difficulties attracting youth to come in and start on time. Punctuality was so critical for these folks that it was difficult. So what is this, this fundamental things we're talking about? I just want to make sure we all speak the same language, at least in terms of definition. At least for the International Youth Foundation, we define foundation skills or life skills في العربي بنحكي مهارات حياتية أو مهارات القرن الواحد وعشرين as 
the ability of the person to uh, be adaptive and take actions to improve one's life and work if they're ready to enter the, the, the labor market. And how do we de decide which life skills should we focus on? Well, we need to know the needs of not just the client, the, the, the private sector, the potential employers, but also what are the credentials of the youth themselves that we're trying to serve. Which brings me to uh, one point I want to, to address in particular here. I believe most of the speakers over the past two days have focused on what I call the fortunate youth. Youth who are skilled and are seeking employment, or at least hopefully they are in the job market. But I believe there is a huge segment of population that we have not heard much about. These are youth that are unemployed and unskilled, and most likely are not even seeking jobs. And this, is, this represents a big segment of the population, not only in Saudi, by the way, across the region. And we cannot use the same solution, the same outreach to, to address this challenge of this particular group as we have or will be dealing with the challenges of those who are elites, in relatively speaking. Those who are in colleges, went to the best colleges in, in Saudi or overseas, can speak languages, and yet they're still facing difficulties finding jobs or starting their own enterprises. So we need to, to, to define unique solutions to the, to the different uh, uh, segments of the population we're dealing with. Um, another issue that I believe is so critical based on our experience, age matters. It's one thing to start introducing, embedding the life skills at the, uh, not just the elementary or high school for those fortunate to go to school, but even from earlier on as part of the DNA of the society uh, so that when youth go to, to school, they know that they are responsible, they know that they have a mission in life, they have a purpose for themselves, they have responsibility for themselves, for their families, for the society at large. This is, in a nutshell, what these fundamental uh, skills, these life skills, are all about. Now, within the life skills uh, jargon, if you like, there are also, based on our experience across the board, across the region, what people call core skills, as opposed to additional skills that would be good to have, based, again, on the need of the target group that you're trying to serve. I will list some of those, and again, that will repeat some of the, of the mentioned earlier. Ability to you know, think creatively. Ability to uh, solve problems. Ability to uh, think outside of the box, so to speak. Uh, manage emotions. Self-confidence respect of authority, and being able to conduct oneself professionally in the workforce. Work ethics. This is one of the areas that each and every employer that we spoke with in the kingdom told us as an issue of interest for them, that they want youth to be introduced to this. Beyond that, we believe that it's so crucial to talk about other life skills that include entrepreneurship. And here I may disagree with some of the speakers earlier today that perhaps gave the impression that entrepreneurship is a solution for all the problems. I don't think so. I think that we are different as people. And yes, th those of us who have the entrepreneurship aptitude and have what it takes to, to become an entrepreneur should, be, should pursue that and should be encouraged. But not all of us obviously are entrepreneurs, otherwise we won't be here as, as you know, staff members of, of various organizations. However, entrepreneurship as a mindset, as an attitude, is critical for one's life, for one's school, and certainly for one's work. You can be an entrepreneur within the work you do, so you can always find ways 
creative means to solving the problems that you deal with at, at the workplace. Finally, we rely, and this is another finding from the, the mapping we conducted, that life skills or fundamental skills are actually available in the MENA region, including in Saudi. The, the, the challenge we found was quality wasn't necessarily always up to standard. The training quality is not always standard. It's not up to the level that one would need it to actually address these issues. And by quality, I can break it into uh, not just the, the, the training uh, curricula itself, which needs to be also addressed, but also the trainers themselves. The over-reliance in our culture in the region here of lecturing, you cannot lecture people on how to communicate properly. You need to have an experiential approach to help them actually practice, become good communicators, better listeners, be able to think creatively through creative uh, exercises as opposed to tell them you need to be creative, you need to think out of the box. And then finally, there was no uh, crisp monitoring and evaluation systems that actually help those who do the life skills training to understand the impact of this training on the target population. So we believe that you need to have all of these in order to be able to make the, the impact you want to make. Finally, my last point, the issue of scale. Providing life skills training is not cheap, particularly if you want to do quality, impactful life skills training that would change people's lives and the society as a, as a large, at large. So, but it's not enough to do it in one school as a pilot or to do it in one city or selected cities. You need to do it across the board. And that requires enormous investments and commitment on the part of the government to actually, and the private sector, by the way, to be able, each one of them, to, 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 to continue this partnership between the private sector, the public sector, in service, not just of youth, but actually of the private sector itself and the government, because each one of them has a stake to address. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mohammed. I think you've made some very important points around the life skills that are necessary for people to participate in society. But also, I appreciate the point that you raised uh, about the lost generation and those who don't have these skills and haven't been employed and perhaps will never be employed and how those, the lack of life skills pass from one generation to the next. So now I'd like to call on our last speaker, Dahlia, to speak about the Swiss situation. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for the invitation. <clears throat> um, I have to say that I don't know at all your country, your kingdom. I uh, heard a lot of interesting things this morning. I knew the food, and I like the food, but all the things I heard this morning on all these things, um, I was thinking about that, um, yes, with our Swiss experience, we could, we could share some experiences, but um, I, I would like to, to um, <clears throat> invite you just to pick out on these uh, experiences what you, in your meaning, you, you could um, use. I heard a lot about uh, this um, integration, integrative force of uh, education for women, perhaps also for other groups. I heard a lot about uh, the discussion about tasks of universities, tasks of uh, technical institutes. Um, I heard about uh, career, about uh, permeability, about social behavior, and I just invite you now to look after some point, points um, I would like to share with you, and let's see whether we, we we'll find some interfaces. 
I'm talking to you as the director of the Swiss Federal um, Institute of Vocational Education and Training, which is the um, expert organization of the Federal Council for Vocational Education and Training. And uh, perhaps you know that the Vocational Education and Training has a long, long history in Switzerland, more than 100 years, and we are very proud about it. But we um, are forced to share it only since about four or five years, before we only looked at it on our view, because we were not forced to share it. We had no international interest. Now we have an international interest, and, and um, that's why um, we, we um, try to explain how it's going on and why we think that it's a good thing. So one... <clears throat> of the um, proofs. Uh, no. One of the proofs we think um, for, for the quality of our vocation, education and training is the very, very low unemployment rate of uh, young people between uh, 15 and 24. This very um, low rate is very stable and we have a very high employability. We heard uh, the numbers this morning from uh, your county, which is um, really another situation. Um, another point is where we think it has to do with our system, with our vocation, education and training system is the very stable ranking on the competitiveness and innovation ranks. We had once in 2009 um, an expert gremium from the OECD. They told us that uh, one or of the forces of our system is that um, the, the uh, professional associations, they are the owners of the professions. So they are pro proud about their professions, and that's why it's very, very strongly employer and market driven. I will show you afterwards um, a few um, <clears throat> basic uh, parts of this. Another force is that we have this very flexible pathways. It's not anymore in Switzerland the issue whether I will go through an academical way or to a um, technical way. The, the question is, where do I enter? And what's uh, an, another very important part, which gives perhaps some answers for you, questions on the social behavior, is the systematic and professional um, uh, career guidance and counseling. As um, <clears throat> we talked just before about uh, quality, I just would like to show you some points about our quality system in VET. Um, we are focusing very, very deeply in the competence profiles as in the professions we have about 230 professions, and each profession has his, its own competence profile, which is a high quality, and I will show you afterwards how the employers um, will uh, give their influence in the definition of these competence profiles. The actors in this whole system, which are the teachers on the school, the instructors in the company, all those who, who learn and teach, there we do also invest from the governmental side a lot in their quality. And then there are the assessment, which is a very important thing, which has a very high standardization in order to ensure the permeability to the um, level, uh, higher level. The higher level, um, so from each entrance through vocational education, you can go through to the whole system. You can even go till the, to a doctorate or a professor entering by a vocational education and training. And I think that's one of the very, very big success factors that we have this high national standardization and um, <clears throat> also this high also, in a um, certain sense, standardized influence of the professional uh, organization. Um, we are sure that our uh, labor forces are quite mobile. They are very mobile in, in Switzerland, and they are also quite mobile in whole Europe. 
Um, and uh, now we have to look after whether with the whole globalization, the mobilization will also go further. A very strong, um, oh, it's a little bit slow. A very strong part of our system is the, the partnership in, in the governance of the whole VET system. We have, um, on the one hand, we have the whole government, the central government and the um, decentralized government in the responsibilities for the whole system, and on the other hand, all the economic, the professional associations. Why this? That's because <coughs> um, Swiss um, vocation, education and training um, is based on a really dual track. So, um, our young students, they don't follow the whole thing in a school, with, um, as it uh, has been described in uh, Singapore, which has a, a, a work a place for, for the practical part. But they do the practical part for two, three to four days um, a week in the company. They are get, getting in productivity. And only one to two days, they are um, um, going to school, at school. And then suddenly, um, Everybody is asking me, but um, companies will invest a lot in this, um, in this education. And we say, yes, they do. But in the end, for each company, on the <clears throat> in the average, um, the company's economy will um, have a higher benefit because all these apprentices from the year two, they are very productive. They are learning in the productive processes. And that's why um, all our uh, companies' economy is investing in this uh, education. Let's tell me <coughs> two words about a really important topic, <coughs> which is more the pedagogical approach. We were talking, uh, hearing um, before about this um, pedagogical approach. Um, I think for all these issues for, um, <clears throat> uh, which concerns uh, attitude, responsibility, the basics also for entrepreneurship we were talking this morning about, I think one really important issue is um, that our young people are educated in a competence-based way. So they have to be able very quickly to take um, Responsi um, <clears throat> um, responsibility, they should be able to decide our problems and so on. And if we would like, and that's what we are trying in Switzerland, to have a very competence-based workforces, we need also a competence-based approach with all our teachers, trainers, examiners. That's what my institute is providing. We need also curriculum who are constructed in a competence-based way um, in order to ensure that we, ho we have in our curricula, in our syllabus, really all the needs of the labor market. That's also one of the tasks of our institute, together with the um, associations from the economy, we are <clears throat> working on this curriculum. Curriculum, the syllabus of vocational education and training in Switzerland is never made by government, but always it's in the, pro, in, the, in the hands of the economy. We always work with them based on analysis, uh, worked on the demands of the um, labor market, and we are working with them in order to ensure that in the curriculum we have really all these uh, things what the labor market needs. One minute. Yeah, I um, think this was uh, where the, the, the important things I wanted to tell you. Um, of course, as uh, my colleague said, it's very important to have a good um, science basic, a research basics, but it comes afterwards. I hope um, you could pick the one or the other experience from Switzerland, and I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dahlia. And it was very interesting when we were discussing your presentation uh, a week or so ago before you came to the forum, uh, that in Switzerland, 
you don't make a choice between vocational education or university education. One sits on top of the other. So you make the choice about where you go into that pathway, not whether it's either or. So very interesting discussion. So I'd like to congratulate all our panel members for keeping to time. Uh, so we do have some time for questions. And before I open up the floor to questions, I just want to pose one question to the group. Uh, and it's a question that we've been discussing as a group over these last couple of weeks, because we've all had communication with, with each other and thinking through these issues uh, in a very thorough way. And one of the issues that came up, and actually Fahad raised it in his presentation, and that is around the cultural attitude towards education, and particularly coming from the family. Uh, so one of the challenges I think we have in many countries is that there's a resistance, uh, particularly by parents, uh, to recommend that their children go into technical education and then going into technical positions. So I'm just wondering whether members of the panel might like to say a little more about your own experience with this, the, the cultural issue around uh, the, res the resistance to technical training. So Fahad, perhaps we might start with you. Hmm. I'm not sure if the mics are all working. Are they all working? Can, can they yes. hear me? Yes. Um, so, um, yes, I totally agree, Stephanie. I think uh, uh, for us, actually, to move into more, especially, you know, as we move to vocational training and, and, and uh, um, uh, really, in, you know, more jobs that can accommodate uh, the current uh, labor market, I think uh, educational reform is important, but it's not the only means. I think it takes to change a lot of the culture itself. And if we want to change the culture, I think, then we have to root it into the family. The family is the nucleus, truly, of all the cultural situations. So I think that's where we're coming in as a Al Gharb group to try to focus on, you know, on having more of a social campaign, media campaign to target families, encourage them to uh, really understand more about raising their kids and give them a good future in the economy, because that's extremely important for the parents. Ibrahim, would you like to make a comment? No, I recognize the issue. Um, it can get too philosophical if we want to go that, that path. And uh, who started this change? Uh, again, it's the chicken or egg uh, question. Is it the family or is it the society? Who created this stigmatization process uh, that we cannot, uh, uh, or we seem not to f be able to find a breakthrough and, and get out of that uh, vicious cycle? Um, but we, we often also at HRDF, we often receive uh, confused job seekers and confused entrepreneurs, actually. We receive a lot of young men and women who come and say, I want to do this. I know how to do it. I am so passionate about it. It's just, I don't think the society will look up to me, they will look down at me if I do it. So we, I, I was talking to a brilliant mechanic, car mechanic, who can actually dismantle the whole car in two days and, and assemble it again in another two days. And we're talking about fancy cars, Mercedes or, or our uh, uh, sponsor here, uh, the BMW. Yet, and he could make a fortune out of that, yet he said, um, I know where to get the money to fund my project. I know how to do it because I love it and I can, I can bring down uh, um, an engine of a car blindfolded. But uh, you know what? When I, now I'm about to get married and, uh, or, or to start looking for my partner. And uh, every time they ask me, what do I do? And I say, mechanic, they say, thank you very much, no. We want someone else. Now, that someone else could be probably one-tenth paid uh, or worth, net worth of that person. But it is that stigma that is still uh, chasing. And, and if you look at the female side, you find some um, uh, fashion designers or, or beauticians, actually, we call them. And uh, they, they are great beauticians. They have the talent and um, they want to do it, but their families prevent them. No, you cannot do it. No, you cannot be. No, we will not allow you to, to do that. So 
I'm not sure if I have an answer to how do we change this. Again, it's a mindset, but is it a mindset of the family or is it a mindset of the whole society? Who started this anyway? Um, was it was it few families started saying, okay, so we're elite and we will not allow our kids to go into that path? Maybe. And that's what I meant when I said, we need to ask the right questions and the two questions so we can find the, the, the root cause of the issues. Otherwise, we will continue beating ourselves around the, the bushes and we will not find um, a true answer. Mm, thank you very much. Now, when I posed my question, I saw a number of hands go up in the audience, so I think we should pass to the floor. Uh, so, when you ask your question, would you mind identifying yourself and your affiliation? So, I think we have mics, so perhaps over here. Do we have... So, we're just w waiting for some uh, microphone. Thank you very much. So if you can introduce yourself and your affiliation, and if you can make your questions succinct, because we have many hands in the audience. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Nrahib badiyuf al-karam fi muntada jidda al-tasadi. Suali mujjah al-Ustad Ibrahim al-Aqil. Yani, tisharrafna liyom bi sama'anna fi khutta ta'alimiyya fi al-madaris. نبغى نعرف طريقتها وآلياتها ومتى ترى نور إن شاء الله لأن هذه خطة إيجابية لتدريب الشباب من المدارس لانخراط في مجال العمل شكرا لكم جميعا شكرا على السؤال اسمي إبراهيم المعاق الله يسلمك تصحيح بس وما خطة هي واحدة من المبادرات أو البرامج اللي بي يعني يبادر فيها صندوق تنمية الموارد البشرية هي محاولة إضافية هي ليست استبدال للنظام التعليمي أو تغييره أو تغيير أجزاء منه إطلاقا هي مثل ما تفضل تفضلت المتحدثة من من سويسرا وأكدت عليها مديرة الجلسة ستيفاني أن نحاول أن ندمج شوية تعليم مهني مع مرحلة معينة من التعليم مع التعليم المعروف حتى يعني يكون في مهارات عملية الفكرة ليست جديدة الفكرة مطبقة في دول كثيرة من العالم نحن نحاول أن نطبقها في مبادرات كثيرة يعني طبقت في العالم ونحاول أن نستفيد من تجارب الدولية في هذا المجال نتوقع ونأمل أنها قد تبدا يعني بتعريف الاشخاص عن مهاراتهم وقدراتهم الشخصيه في هذه المرحله مثل ما تفضل الاخفاد قد تؤدي الى تفتيح او تفتيق اذهانهم على انه فعلا شغفهم في شيء مختلف عن ما تحاول عائلاتهم رسمه لهم يعني احنا نبغاك تصير طبيب او مهندس او او معلم او معلمه او غيرها يمكن يجد شغفه في مكان اخر ترى في محاولات يعني لإعطاء الحق في محاولات لجهات حتى داخل المملكة العربية السعودية أنا أعتقد أنه في شركة مثل نسمة طبقوا حاولوا أنهم يعني يضعون تجارب أو شعور بوظائف معينة مهن معينة خلنا بالأصح مهن معينة أمام فئات مختلفة من المجتمع فئات سنية مختلفة أو عمرية مختلفة وفيه جهات أخرى طبقتها بشكل مختلف تماما فيها مبادرة بدأت قبل فترة اسمها دلني على السوق هي لرعاية أيضا الناس اللي حابة تكتشف شيء وتخشى من المخاطرة ويرعونهم بطريقة معينة وأنا أعتقد مبادرة جديرة بالاهتمام والمتابعة ففي يعني فيها محاولات في المجتمع السعودي نحن نحاول ان ندعم ايضا هذه المحاولات بمبادره من جانب صندوق تنميه الموارد البشريه. Thank you very much. Now we, we have a question from this side. السلام عليكم دكتوره فوزيه أشماخ مديره مركز استشاره للتطوير الذاتي والنفسي. واستشارية نفسية واجتماعية بكلية دار بجامعة دار الحكمة مسؤولة عن الإرشاد والتوجيه المهني. في عندي تعقيب على ما تفضل به الأستاذ إبراهيم المعيقل. شكرا على الإلقاء. 
فيما يتعلق بأهمية اختيار تخصص بناء على الميول المهنية أريد أن أشير إلى أن هذا البرنامج تم تطبيقه في جامعة كلية دار الحكمة يعني منذ 15 سنة ولاقى نتائج كثير جيدة لأن جامعة دار الحكمة كانت أول مؤسسة تعليمية قامت بهذه المبادرة وطبقت اختبار الميول المهنية يعني أنه لا يتم توجيه الطالبة إلى برنامج أكاديمي إلا بعدما يحدد ميولها المهنية بطريقة علمية طبعا هذا البرنامج لقى نتيجة جيدة من حيث أن نقص تغيير في التخصص أو الانسحاب وكذلك ارتفاع في المستوى الأكاديمي وفي التحصيل الدراسي للطالبة إذا أنا أتمنى يعني أن هذه التجربة يعني تعم جميع المؤسسات التعليمية في القطاعات سواء الحكومية أو الخاصة حتى يتم الاستفادة من طاقات أبنائنا وبناتنا وتأهيلهم بطريقة مميزة لسوق العمل والاستثمار في مهاراتهم. بس شكرا. So I think we have time for one more one more question. Uh, and while we're preparing for that question, I'd also like you to find your clickers because we're going to have five questions that I'd like everyone to vote on. So we'll take our question from here. Uh, good afternoon. Stephanie, this is Dr. Fouad Mijalid. I'm an international consultant at uh, UN headquarters in Geneva mm. and uh, Cairo. Mm. I'm addressing to you a question. Ernest and Yang have been in the country for almost 30 years or more. And they have made a tremendous contract and amount in the country. <laughs> but for us to understand what Ernest and Yang have done to the country, apart from their uh, business, there is nothing to be found by all. <laughs> With my respect, with my respect to Mr. Lim from ITs, they have done a tremendous job in their country by training 7,000 people per year. Can we make an initiative around here at this time with Mr. Dr. Ibrahim al Maegel with his appearance that if you could join yourself with ITs, and do something to the community and to the young of these countries for at least an, as an initiative for some time so that all our businessmen can carry out this initiative in the future. Thank you. Mm. Well, perhaps I might say that uh, I understand that there was a study that was launched yesterday afternoon that was conducted by EY and working together with Mr. Ibrahim uh, on the very issue that we are talking about today. But I can also say that EY, uh, if you have a look at the motto that we have, it's about building a better working world. And I totally agree with you. And one of the reasons I came to the firm after 25 years in the university sector is, before, is because the firm is committed to exactly that, building a better working world, and that's why we have agreed to be the knowledge partners for this particular forum. So thank you. Can I comment? And please. Dr. Walid, thank you for being here for your country. And I don't agree completely that the companies are right that they have been able to do this. This is the right thing. This is the reason why they are actually in this life. But it may be a little contribution, and it may be less than what we expect. أنا لي بما أنك ذكرت الصندوق لي بس نقطتين سريعة ستيفاني واحد نعم إحنا مستعدين دائما لأن نضع يدنا في يد أي منشأة سواء كانت دولية أو سعودية في سبيل تدريب المواطنين على رأس العمل 
وعام 2014 و2015 و2016 بالنسبة لصندوق تنمية الأموال البشرية هي هي أعوام التدريب على رأس العمل on job training حتكون المبادرات مركزة تماما عليها لأنها ستكون مبادرات عملية هذا من ناحية من ناحية ثانية أنا أستغل كل نقطة أجد فيها أصحاب المنشآت ويعني أستميحهم عذراً في أن يتتسع صدورهم لنا وعندنا الشيخ صالح الآن شرف الجلسة فلعلي أستفيد أيضاً من حضوره أنه إحنا كمنشآت دائماً نطلب أن من يقترب من أسوار منشآتنا ويطلب التوظيف أو يرغب التوظيف أن يكون ملاكاً نبغاه يكون يعرف الحاسب الآلي ويعرف اللغة الإنجليزية واللغة العربية وجميع المهارات اللي تحدث عنها الأستاذ محمد ويجينا واحد جاهز يعني نحن نريد ملاك مو بس كذا ويعرف الكالتشر حقة المنظمة حقتي والشركة حقتي أو المؤسسة حقتي أو مؤسسة صغيرة أو كبيرة والنشاط حقي ويعرف عملائي ويعرف أنا تركس حقتي ويعرف كل شيء من أول يوم وإلا بما أنه سعودي ما عند كل هذا هذا الرصيد فهو سيء وكسول وغير مهتم ولا يرغب في التعلم وما نبغاه ونبغى نجيب أعطونا يا وزارة العمل تأشيرات هذا هذه أسطورة يجب أن تتحطم مهما عملت الدولة مهما عملت الدولة من برامج دعم في التدريب لا يوجد منشأة على وجه الأرض تستطيع أن تدرب موظفين لكم أحسن من منشآتكم ما في أحد يفهم أسرار شركات الشيخ صالح كامل إلا هو وموظفينه فهم اللي يقدروا يدربوا الناس ولا حد يفهم يعني أسرار شركة بي ام دبليو أو غيرها أو غيرها من الشركات الشركة الوحيدة المنشأة الوحيدة القادرة على التدريب الصحيح 100% هي نفس المنشاه التي تحتاج التوظيف، فافتحوا ابواب منشاتكم قليلا. اذا اذا هناك تعسر او 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 مشاكل في في فتح هذه الابواب وتستطيع الدوله او على الاقل الجهاز الذي انا امثله ان ندعم لحلحله بعض الامور حتى تستوعب منشاتكم عدد اكبر لتدريب اعداد اكبر من المواطنين فاهلا وسهلا بمقترحاتكم. نحن وجدنا من قبل الدولة لخدمتكم ما دام أنكم أيضا ستخدمون أبناء وبنات هذا الوطن فأرجوكم ثم أرجوكم ثم أرجوكم هؤلاء أبنائكم وبناتكم نعم فيهم من يعني يجب أن نعترف أنهم أفراد والأفراد لديهم مستويات مختلفة يجب أن نتحملهم ويجب مثل ما نبادر ونسارع سارع المنشات وهذا حقها المشروع في أن تقطف ثمار أو تقطف المتميزين في الكليات والجامعات يجب أيضا أن يتحملوا مسؤوليتهم لأنهم في النهاية آباء وأمهات سواء كانوا رجال أعمال أو سيدات أعمال فافتحوا أبوابكم هذه هذا الوطن مليء مليء بالكنوز وأنتم ترونهم أمام عيونكم شوفوا إبداعاتهم في اليوتيوب وتويتر اللي قدروا يبدعوا في يوتيوب وتويتر من غير ما حد يدربهم يقدروا يبدعوا عندكم اذا انتم دربتوهم وهيئتوا لهم بيئه عمل مناسبه. انا اشكركم. Thank you very much. And now we have uh, the opportunity to vote on five questions. Uh, and I understand that those questions will be uh, reflected here behind us. I'm sure everybody knows how, I hope that everyone has their clicker. And we have, uh, so only press one to agree or two to disagree. So there are a number of statements. Uh, the first statement is, business should invest more in technical training. Yes or no? So well, one for agree, two for disagree. So the second question is, business should be mandated to provide more work experience programs. Mm. So we... So the second question is, businesses should be mandated to provide more work experience programs. 
So one for agree, two for disagree. I'm not sure this is, oh, here we go. So, 95% agree. So if we go to the third question, educational institutions should be held accountable for employment outcomes of their students. So, 65% agree. Very good. <laughs> the fourth question, and quite a provocative question, the education system needs fundamental reform. I'm not sure if everyone's given up voting. <laughs> so, shall we go to the final question? Oh, here we go. Yeah. So, the final question is, there's too much international influence in the Saudi education system. It's, it's stopped. I think it's, I think it's stopped working. I think we've been uh, working too hard on our questions. So on that note, I'd like to sincerely thank our panel for their participation and for their discipline and for all the hard work that you've put into preparing your presentations today. Very thoughtful presentations and you've contributed a great deal to this forum. Thank you so much. I just... بروفيسورة سيفاني فاهي شكرا جزيلا لك كانت هذه الجلسة من أكثر الجلسات انتظاما وكانت تحت عنوان تطوير المهارات التأسيسية والمحافظة عليها شكرا بروفيسورة فاهي وشكرا لكل المشاركين في هذه الجلسة وأتمنى الآن من السيد فهد بن سيبان السلمي عضو مجلس إدارة الغرفة التجارية والصناعية بجدة أرجو منه التفضل بتكريم المشاركين في هذه الجلسة
شكرا لكم جزيلا الان سناخذ استراحه سريعه لمده ربع ساعه فقط وسنكون على الموعد مجددا في تمام الساعه الخامسه مساء مع جلسه مهمه جدا من جلسات منتدى جد الاقتصادي وهي حوار الشباب مع مركز الملك عبد العزيز للحوار الوطني بحضور وبمشاركه فاعله من معالي الاستاذ فيصل بن عبد الرحمن بن معمر مستشار خادم الحرمين الشريفين الامين العام لمركز الملك عبد العزيز للحوار الوطني اذا نلقاكم مره اخرى بعد ربع ساعه من الان فالى اللقاء